right, so welcome back. So our goal this time is to actually implement the tic-tac-toe game, so to track the turns, like change turns when somebody presses a button, and then to check for wins. Checking for wins is kind of the hardest part. So it would be an O win, an X win, or a tie game. Uh, how do we look at the board and figure out when those things have just occurred? So we'll just kind of come back into our uh, playground, and we'll start by implementing uh, pressed square. So the first thing we'd like to do in press square is we'd like to know if they just pressed on a spot that is actually open, right? So we don't want to do anything if they just pressed on a spot that's not open. So we'll just go ahead and say game board uh, at location index. Uh, if it is not equal to dot none, uh, then just silently do nothing, right? So I don't even care. You didn't really press anything. Uh, do nothing. The next thing we want to do is we want to check the game state. So we really only want to do things if the game state is equal to X turn uh, or O turn. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and set up an else if structure uh, that actually checks for those two situations, and then everything else will just kind of silently get ignored. So if the game's already won, don't do anything. Just do things for X turn and O turn. That's the only time you want to do something. And if it was O's turn and they just pressed an open square, the first thing we want to do is we want to actually set that square to be uh, an X, right? Uh, and then if it uh, was their turn now, then it's probably going to be uh, O's turn next. Um, and so those are the main things we want to do. We want to mark it, set the other person's term, and then we also want to check for game over, which is a function that we'll have to go right. Um, and then if the game is over, then it'll set it as, you know, one lost or tied. Just because I dislike syntax errors, so it's of course yelling at me right now, I'm going to go create this function uh, just kind of as a little placeholder. So I'll just say func uh, check for game over, and then I'll go ahead and mark it with a uh, to do implement, uh, and what the heck, I'll add my smiley face as well. And we'll go write that in just a minute. Uh, if it was O's turn and they just clicked on an open square, it's you know very similar, uh, except for it's completely opposite. So mark it with an O. Uh, say that it's X turn, uh, and then check for game over. Obviously, there's different ways to write this, right? There's a lot of things I could have done, uh, but this is the way that I chose to do it, and I think it's a fairly clean implementation of pressed square. The hard part is, of course, checking for game over, like actually like seeing did somebody just win. So we're going to spend most of our time here. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to first check to see if, if it was a tie game, right? So we'll check to see if it's a tie first, then we'll check to see if somebody won, because you might have you might have like all the squares filled, but somebody actually won with that ninth spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for um, all the board being full or not. So I'm going to say, does the game board uh, contain any uh, dot none values? If it does not contain any nuns, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set the state uh, to tie, right? So by default, it's a tie if they're all filled. And then I'll still check it for a win here in a little bit. And then regardless of whether it was a tie or not, I still want to check it for win. The strategy that I'm going to use here is I've got various ways that you could win this game. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an array of strings. Uh, so I'm just going to start it off empty. And I'm going to call it lines of three. And what these lines of three are going to really do is they're going to look through all the different indexes, right? So it's going to make a string out of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's also going to make a string out of 0, 3, 6, 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8, and then your two diagonals as well. So it's going to build up those uh, eight strings, and then we're just going to check to see is one of those strings XXX or is one of those strings OOO. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. So we're going to use uh, lines of three dot append. And then we're going to use our function for get game string. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to pass in uh, certain indices to it. So the indices that we want to pass in in this first case uh, are 0, 1, and 2. And so now that you kind of see the pattern, I mean, you could probably do this faster than me. Uh, the second one down, we want to check uh, 3, 4, 5. Uh, and then we want to do 6, 7, and 8. Uh, and so what that will do is that will append... Uh, all of the strings uh, for the rows. And then once we've got all the rows, uh, we can do all the columns next. I won't make you watch me type all of this. Uh, but you can see that we need to check 136, uh, 147, uh, 258. 
And then we've got the two diagonals. The order of the indices doesn't matter. You know, you want to do uh, one, four, and eight. Uh, and then I chose to put this in in numeric order, two, four, and six, but the order didn't actually matter there. So once we've got that, we've, we've actually got all of our different wind paths kind of figured out. And then really all we want to do is we want to just go through each line of three uh, and see if it's equal to uh, XXX or OOO. So we'll just say if line of three is equal to XXX, uh, then this game state uh, needs to be uh, an X1. If, however, uh, it is equal to OOO, uh, then that's going to be uh, a game state of O1. And so our basic strategy of making a string out of it uh, made it fairly easy to do the comparison. Ooh, I have a single equals there. Thank you, compiler, for fixing me there. Uh, so now we're ready to see. Uh, we had a plan. We implemented the plan. Uh, did we actually just do anything useful, uh, or did I just waste all of our times? Hopefully it worked because it worked when I prepared it. So we come down here to kind of observe our test results. Uh, and you can see that when we started the game, it was empty and it was X's turn. And then X put a spot uh, and it was O's turn. Uh, and then it goes back and forth uh, until eventually uh, X wins the game. So they won the game by taking on that first column. If you wanted to, you could check a lot of different columns. You could also check things like what happens if uh, when it was X's turn, they actually pressed square two a second time, uh, and you could see that it just ignored it, right? So it was X's turn, uh, he pressed a spot that it was not pressable, uh, and then he pressed a spot that was pressable, and he won the game. So you could add checks like that. Uh, I also added in an O win here. This also gave me a chance to check one of my diagonals, so I did kind of the reverse diagonal here, and you can see the O one. Uh, and then at the bottom here, uh, we've got a tie game. So we could do a lot more checking. Swift Playgrounds is not a replacement for unit testing, but boy, it's a sure easy way to get things together quickly. So this is the, uh, the game for tic-tac-toe. Uh, later, in another unit, we'll actually make the UI for it. It'll actually make it for a universal app. Uh, but this shows you kind of how we can use some of these skills we've learned about Swift. All right, that's it for the follow-alongs. Uh, if you're taking this class for credit, uh, what you'll need to do is you'll actually need to take your follow-alongs folder uh, and you're going to need to go ahead and compress it uh, once you've got everything done. Uh, and then the zip file is going to need to be submitted on Moodle. Once you've got that done, you should be all set. All right, see you next time.